Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Mandy with Hope Designs and we're gonna do a clock in a moment. But first I wanted to introduce you to the brand new Bling It set from Color Art. <clears throat> they um, just came out last week. So this is kind of what the label looks like. And I always put a little dot on the top. So I'm sure some of you will be curious what is different between um, the bling it and the regular primary elements. So the pr regular primary elements is a dry paint system that has dry paint and mica. And this set you can actually use in acrylic or resin. So it is a lot more of the mica mixture. So I'm going to show you all of the colors. And don't forget, if you want to grab the new set, you can. Um, using my code, Mandy1120. Sorry, I had to get my dog up. He was right underneath my feet. So, and these colors are spectacular. I just can't emphasize that enough. So I'm gonna go over the colors with you. This is, it's so hard to get the lighting right so you can see them. This is called Rain. And this is a black pearl green. So it's not just an interference green, it has that black pearl in it that gives it that depth. Super beautiful. So that's the first one. The second one will be called Aurora, which is a black pearl red. This one is probably one of my favorites. Super, super beautiful. Again, the, the light doesn't do it justice. The third one is Angel Wings, which is a black pearl blue. Super beautiful. I mixed these up last night, so I'm having to kind of stir them up. But, oh man, it's just so beautiful. And Luna, another one of my favorites, is a black pearl violet. Oh man, you cannot even see how beautiful it is. So we're probably gonna use this one today. And Meadow is a green. I'm trying to figure out where I put it. One second. We're also going to use this color today. This is sort of like a sea foam, frosty, icy green. It's really a very beautiful green. Sorry, I'm trying not to make a mess. Super beautiful. So we're gonna use that today. The next one is Byzantine, which is a blue. Sorry, my dog's gonna make noise. Super pretty. And then Chalcedony is one of my favorites. It's a periwinkle color. Of course, I like purples and blues and all that, so it would be one of my favorites. I just don't know if this camera is focusing well enough to show you how beautiful they are. Eek. So if they're pretty now, you can only imagine what they're gonna look like used on a surface and especially with a coat of resin. Um, let's see, indigo. Indigo is a deep blue violet. Super 
super pretty. We may use this one today, I'm not sure. Still trying to decide. Um, I tend to use too much color. Glass Wing is a peach gold, and this is definitely in the top three for me. I, I don't know if I have a favorite, but look at that. So pretty. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. It's so pretty. Whew. I don't think we're gonna use that one today, but I'm not sure. And then there's Isadora, I think is how you say this, which is named after the yellow diamond. So it's um, a yellow diamond color, another super beautiful color. Don't forget we have the collaboration this Sunday with myself and four other artists and the color scheme that we have chosen or agreed on is kind of the orange and yellow and black in a monarch butterfly. So I actually may sneak this one in there. I haven't decided yet. That's not like the same color yellow, but you know, it doesn't matter. So super beautiful. And Parisian Lily is a pink with a blue shift. And I really like this color. It kind of reminds me of Shy Rose. If you've seen that color in one of the previous primary element sets, only this one will be a lot more opaque. And you can use this in resin too. So I actually um, wanted to use Shy Rose in resin. So I used Fluid Art or Vivid Art Fluid so it would break down in resin. But look, now I can just use this. And it's, it's really beautiful. It's got a beautiful shift. <clears throat> I don't know whether this one will make the cut today or not. Because I don't want to use so much color that you can't see any of the uniqueness of the colors, you know. So that's the battle. And then this one is called Oasis, which is a sparkling turquoise. And who doesn't always love a sparkling turquoise, right? So we may use this one today. Uh, I love it so much. It's so hard for me to decide which ones to use and which ones not to use. Um, so I'm gonna tell you what we're doing today. We're going to do this clock round and I'm gonna do, I think my goal is to do kind of a minimalist swipe and um, I'm trying out a new setup today because I've been frustrated by using the puppy pull when doing swipes because I can't get my hand angled the right way to get um, the swipe right. Sorry, my head is hurting. I'm kind of spaced out. So that's why I wanted to give that a try and see if um, this gives me a little bit better ease in using a palette knife and getting in there and swiping. So let me know from your experience as a viewer, um, what do you, how was the lighting? Was it better or worse? Was there any difference? If there's not, then cool. But I just noticed the other day when I was trying to do a swipe and it went, I haven't even released that video yet, but that went terribly wrong. And so I was like, you know, I'm going to have to get a better setup if I'm going to be able to um, really swipe these the right way. So my plan is that we're going to use pretty much all the new pigments. We are going to use one boom gel, which is one of my favorite colors um, from Parrot. It's called Parrot Fish Green. And you can get these, um, the link is below. For pixel paint designs, you can save yourself 15% off using my code, which is in the description box. And um, um, Aubrey's in the US and she also sells Australian Floetrol and some other things. She has some paints on her site. So really, really sweet lady and does has a great business. So if you're looking to pick up some stuff here in the US, um, it's a great option for you. And I'm still learning how to use boom gel. So you know, don't, don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself because um, my skill level is, we're still working on that. So I think the colors that we're gonna use, in addition to the parrot fish green, 
we're definitely going to use meadow. In fact, I want meadow to be a fairly prominent color in here. Sorry about that. We have like constant solicitors at our door these days. So I know for sure we're going to use meadow. We're going to use chalcedony and we're going to use indigo and we're going to use luna. I feel like we probably, should, if we use anything else, I think it might be overkill. So I think that's all we're going to use. <clears throat> so bear with me just a second and we'll get going. I lied. We're going to use Oasis too. But that's it. While I'm getting everything set up, um, I do get this question a lot. Do you tape over the hole in the clock? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Ultimately, if you don't, paint's going to run into there and can pull on your design. So it can warp your composition and all that. So um, I was watching Tammy Anderson. She did a clock and she covered up the hole by putting a little piece of a straw that had tape around it in the middle. Um, so I kind of took from that idea and I cut, I basically put the straw in the hole and then I cut it to be level with the clock. And then I took an X-Acto knife and I put like a paint swatch over the hole and I basically cut a hole about the size of the clock hole from the the piece of plastic and I taped it to the straw and I wrapped some tape around it and then I kind of jammed it in there and it was still kind of sticking out um, so I made sure it was wedged in there really well and then I just took a little bit of sandpaper <laughs> leveled it out to make sure that at least all of the clock round was showing so this is I think this is a 10 inch clock round and I think it's an art minds round I got at Michaels um, and <clears throat> so yeah, I'm gonna use a, sorry, my, I thought I had a profound thought, but I didn't. So I'm gonna use uh, the white house paints. So we're gonna obviously use the Bloom recipe today. And I was really on the fence whether or not to try to make this somewhat of a minimal swipe because it's such a small surface that's kind of hard to do. So we're gonna just kind of see what happens with it. I do have palette knives over here and um, all of that so that way we're prepared for whatever. I think this is probably enough pillow paint but I'm just gonna scrape what's out of this cup. So all the ingredients I use as usual are in the description box below. All the promo codes are in the description box below. So the 20% off for color art is in there. The 15% off for pixel paint designs is in there. I have a KS Resin coupon code in there. So um, I also have a link for Blick Art Materials, which is where I buy most of my other stuff, like regular art supplies. <clears throat> so feel free to use our code anytime you shop there. And it um, won't cost you anything, of course, and it just helps our channel. So, so I hope I have enough paint on here. It looks a little, a little sketchy, so. Let me add just a little bit more. So I hope everybody's having a good day. Uh, it's Monday today. Um, by the time you see this, it will probably be Tuesday or so. <clears throat> Let's see, just a little, just a little bit of spinning out. I don't, this isn't going to slide very easily because it's on the silic ugh, silicone mat, but just in case, I'm going to put a little paint down. I'll just help it stick. It'll be insurance for us. <clears throat> All right, so I um, also forgot to mention I'm going to use a blue-black or indigo cell activator from Atelier. I got this at Blick, and this is the first time I've used it as a cell activator. So I, I know other people have used it and it works great. <clears throat> I didn't test it on anything first, so we'll see. All right. So I'm gonna put 
put the, hmm, that's not true. I don't want the darker colors up next to the cell activator because obviously I want there to be some contrast. So I'm going to put Luna. Yeah. I'm going to put Luna down first. And I always use way too much paint. So we can probably just resolve ourselves to the fact that I'm probably about to do that again. I am going to really try to keep this as somewhat of a minimal swipe. But again, this is a small surface, so it's kind of hard to tell. And this is the indigo. These colors are so beautiful and so great for this kind of a, a piece where you kind of want to maximize the kind of pearly effect. So now I'm going to use the boom gel. So this boom gel is um, kind of a transparent color, which is exactly what I want. I don't want it to dominate. And so a transparent color is perfect because it will provide color saturation, but it won't completely take over. So when you talk about transparent and opaque paints, like they all have their place, not all opaque paints are what you want for every pour. Same thing with your transparent paints. Um, so sometimes people think transparent is a bad thing. Um, our cell activator is a semi-opaque, which is, you can tell because it has this little half circle on it. <clears throat> All right, so then the next one I'm gonna put down is, I think Oasis is what we'll do next. Ooh, that's a lot right there. And I have to remember that as we spin, what's closest out on these edges is going to probably fly off when we spin, which is often the best cells and composition, unfortunately, is what ends up flying off. <laughs> it's just the way it goes. So we're going to do, I'm tempted to put more of this Luna, but I think I, I'm already way over on the paint. So let's do the Chalcedony right here, and then we're gonna finish off with Meadow. Such a beautiful color. I even got out some other colors thinking, oh, I'll throw this, and I was like, no, you always do that. So, so let me know what you think of our colors in the comments below. And I may not wait till this is dry to do the clock parts on video because I want to get the video out so you guys can see these colors and I won't be able to do the clock parts until it's resin. So I mean, we're talking a long time from now. So I may try to do another uh, video where I put clock pieces together later on. Um, because I know some people would like to see that. Okay, so cell activator. I'm a little nervous because I had to add a lot of Floetrol to this because my I added a lot of paint consist a lot of paint on my spoon, maybe more than usual, and so I'm a little nervous about my consistency. Thankfully, a swipe is fairly forgiving, so. Usually I do a three to one ratio and then I, um, so the three parts Australian Floetrol to one part paint, and then I will add Floetrol if I need to, because then I have a little bit more control over it if it's a little off. So I'm gonna put my cell activator on my palette knife and swipe so we're probably also going to get some ghost cells that way, which I kind of like the idea of that. So, and what I mean by, well, they're not really ghost cells. What I mean by that is pillow cells where the cell activator just reacts with the pillow because it kind of creates some cool interest in the, in the piece. Um, I really am nervous that I'm using 
way too large of a palette knife, but I'm committed, so here we are. So let's see. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna go like this. Okay, the cells are reacting, so I was kind of nervous about that. I was nervous that they wouldn't, that my cell activator was too thick. But it's working out great. So I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna wipe this guy off and go again. And I love that cell activator because I love that it's it's like a deep Prussian blue almost. Um, so it's perfect for the colors that we're using without um, being too dark. I love that it adds that um, blue color. It's not a perfectly black black, but it's um, got a great bluish tint to it. It really is very similar to, it's like as if you were to take a Prussian blue and then put some black in it. That's kind of what it looks like. And I've always loved it when people use it as a cell activator. I just hadn't done it yet. So now here, I'm going to try to come, no, don't be trying to be too crazy. I like these cells right here, so. I have way too much paint on there. So, I don't want it to stay real, you know, limey like this. So I'm gonna maybe mess with it just a little bit before we spin it out. Um, but I'm gonna let the cells develop just a little bit. And while I do, I'm gonna pick up after myself. You can't see, but where I wiped my palette knife down here, <laughs> there's cells on my, my little puppy pad. So that's kind of cool. There's a lot of cell activator there, but it does seem to be developing further as it sits there. So I'm not super worried. And the fact that there's boom gel in the pore seems to be helping with any excess cell activator. And I have paint all in my fingernails, which is... So let's see, I'm going to blow out some parts that are super blue. But some of it will open up when we spin, so. I'm just trying to get as much as I can to open up. Okay. And I'm gonna tweak it a little bit. I'm afraid to tweak it too much because every time I think that's going well, it doesn't go well. Um, so, mm -hmm. so this part, Just had kind of a weird edge from how I swiped it. So I'm just kind of playing into it so it looks like we did that on purpose. Same thing with this one here. Okay, oops, didn't really mean to do that. Was like one of the best parts too. I wonder if I can fix that. Um, I don't know if I can fix that. All I'm doing is putting this in there and gently twirling a little bit just to see if I can't get it to not be so obvious. You may not even be able to see very clearly from your angle what I did. Okay, I think I made it a little bit better. So that's one thing when you're doing this, you gotta be careful that you're not 
maybe overworking it. <laughs> like I almost did it again just right there. I kind of did do it right there, but that's going to spin off. All right, so just minor things. I'm no Nikki. She's amazing. I watch her do this and I'm like in awe of how she can just tweak something and make it look like it's a cakewalk. When I do it, it looks like a train wreck, but I'm getting there. I'm watching and learning. Okay. So all I'm doing is taking these edges that look kind of unintentional and swirling them into the design because when we spin this out, those are gonna become even more noticeable. But other than that, there's a lot of interest in this and I don't wanna mess it up. Like I like this. I like that this is mostly pillow with a little bit of outline color. I like that. Um, I'm tempted to like wreck it like right here just so that it has some unique composition right there. But I don't know. Because for a clock that would be kind of cool. I kind of like it. But I kind of feel like maybe that's all we should do, you know? Because the, the more I keep messing with it, the more it's going to want to go crazy. Now I kind of feel weird that we have this here and nothing over here. But see, this is how that starts for me. So let's just give it a spin. The colors are magnificent. I love the colors we picked. I don't even know if you can see that well, what it looks like. Let me zoom you in a little bit. All right. <clears throat> Gonna start off gentle with the spin. Just kind of see how it opens up. So far, it's playing well. I love that this opened up and became not the same size as this one. And I'm just gently spinning for two reasons. For one, I am the only shield on this side guarding against the paint. <laughs> and for two, I don't want my cells to be wonky. I want them to be delicate. I like the tight little cells um, as long as I can keep them. So I want to see how the composition develops. This is awesome. I love the kind of intentional swirl. I'm kind of digging that we put that in there now. And the one thing I don't love is this right here. And I'm pretty sure I, oops, maybe I should take a different approach with that guy. All right. I think there's paint underneath there. So, yeah. So the more I mess with it, the worse it's getting. So I'm just going to try to cover it up. And if it spins out, then I'll mess with it and make it look intentional. I may have to do that now. So, I can live with that, it's wispy. But I love these tight little neat cells and I love that we have different kinds of cells. So the edges are almost covered but we still have quite a bit of paint on. So just making sure that as we spin it, it's holding its composition pretty well because we could always spin more slowly. Um, I'm gonna help these edges here with kind of the fly off where it's just white just kind of help it get to the edge so we don't have to overspin just to cover our edges. I usually prep these rounds. This is a pretty thick, hard board, so I didn't prep it, but I usually prime it with kills or um, like a two-in-one two like flat white spray paint that has a primer in it. So just as a best practice, um, that's a good thing to do. So we still have maybe a little bit too much paint on the surface, but not a lot. So let's give it a, another gentle spin. 
So far, I don't have any paint outside of my puppy pad, so I'm pretty happy. I really hope that the lighting isn't terrible for you guys because um, it is so much easier for me to swipe when I can get to it without picking up the, the cake spinner. It's kind of hard to pick up the cake spinner and not kind of skew the composition from the very beginning, you know? And the edges look so pretty. I really love that parrotfish green color. It is an incredible color. And you can see how rich it is, even though it's not an opaque color, you can see how beautiful it really enhanced this piece. I mean, anybody who knows me knows I love a good teal. I guess it's more of a phthalo turquoise type color, but I love those colors. Now, I do have an opinion about this. So I am going to try to, um, it's too exaggerated for me. I like it until about here, and then I don't. So I'm going to clean off my hands to minimize the chances of me dragging it in the paint again um, and see if I can't tweak it. So I'm going to pause you. Okay, so I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I'm going to take my little knife and I'm going to start with a little bit of white from down here. I'm going to see if I can't just scoop it off. It's not going very well, but I don't mind a little bit of it, but it's a little bit much. I think I can work with it about that far. Um, I need to deal with this part. If nothing else, I'm just going to put more white on it and give it one more spin, but I feel like I'm making it worse by moving it around. I just felt like it was starting to kind of look like a Whoville type thing with its really pointy top. <clears throat> okay, I don't know if that was a success or not. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of pillow paint right there for like insurance and then Give it a gentle spin. Put a little bit right here too. <clears throat> the one thing I am gonna do though is kind of gently, I didn't wanna do that. The struggle's real. It still kind of looks pretty Whoville. All right. Let's see. I'm trying to smooth out this over here. I don't want to leave a whole bunch of paint on there either. Nobody invited you to this party. Stop coming. <sighs> Look, it just wants to be here. It's like, I'm going to make an appearance, okay? Ready or not, here I am. Okay, I can deal with that little horn over there in a second. Sometimes it's just easier to use your finger. If you don't have paint all over your fingers, that's a challenge most of the time. Okay, now this guy wants to have his own party over here. Okay, okay. I'm getting paint on everything over here. All right. Being a little knucklehead. So...
dragon. Speaking of knuckles, I just drug my knuckle in that. So I know this part's boring, guys, but this is part of the process, so I don't want to make you think that, like, oh, look, it just magically fixed itself. No. And I just drug my finger in some green. And I will obsess over some really dumb stuff sometimes. So sometimes I just got to say, okay, enough of that. So now I'm going to take this and just kind of make this look a little bit more intentional. I'm not trying to bring Whoville back. I'm just trying to smooth that out a little bit. Nikki, if you're watching, I'm sure if you were here, you would know what to do. When she doesn't like something, she just makes it magical or gets rid of it somehow. I'm not there yet, but we, we did. We got rid of a lot of the Whoville part, so. <sighs> I'm kind of tempted. just to keep it from spinning into the Whoville all the way out again. I just kind of wanted to kind of angle that toward the center. And then I might have just made it worse. I don't know. It's only paint. There we go. Whoville. I actually really like the composition, other than the Whoville thing, which I think will look cool once the cloth hands and all that are on there. But I like the composition. And what I always want with these types of swipes is that it's not just a perfect line across the top. And maybe that's just a preference for me. Um, because the last one that my husband saved um, I didn't like it, but a lot of people did, so maybe it's just a preference thing. So, so let me bring you down for a close-up. I think I fixed the Whoville, and um, let me know what you think. Okay, everyone, here's our close-up. Um, I kind of messed with this a little bit more, just a little bit. So that's why you see the lumpiness of the paint, but that'll be fine in a second. So check out the shimmer on this. Look at that deliciousness. I asked my husband what he thought about it and he said it was pretty. So, you know, he is usually the rescuer of paintings, but I like it. I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to part with it. I was a little shaky on this random thing here, but he said it looks good. He said it looks like a, blue, like a green phoenix or something. I never see stuff in my paintings until somebody says something. But I like that we have a variety of cells. The parrotfish green is just a magical color. I love it so much. And I think it complemented these colors so much. You can see right here where most of those cells are coming from the parrotfish green and the cell activator. There is some pigment in there, but this is 100% just the blingit colors and parrotfish green. There's no additional tube paints other than the cell activator. So these, this new set is gorgeous, you guys. So don't forget to use them. Um, use my coupon code. Go ahead and grab yourself a set um, for 20% off. It's Mandy, all lowercase, Mandy1120. Don't forget about the coupon code from Pixel Paint Designs to get you some boom gel. You can see how magical just adding that one boom gel was. I really, really like this one. And um, again, I will seal this with resin and I'll probably show it to you guys in the Facebook group. So if you're not part of our Facebook group, Fluid Art Friends, would love it for you to join us. Um, and I usually try to show you the resin results as like a short later on. Um, so let me know what you think. And if you're not subscribed, we would love for you to subscribe. Um, hit that notification bell. Thank you guys so much for watching, watching <laughs> and have a great day.